Hey, welcome. Today's episode of Your Daily Scrum is brought to you by professional scrum trainers, Ryan Ripley and Todd Miller. Oh, that was almost an ad, wasn't an ad. <laughs> what we do each and every day is try to help you get a little bit better at scrum and agile and help your teams deliver and perform and do great stuff. Uh, part of that initiative is community.agileforhumans.com. Todd and I have set up a pretty intricate area, a lot of activities, a lot of monthly events, a lot of videos, a lot of Q&As, a lot of stuff out there to help you master Scrum, right? And best of all, Todd, guess what? It's free. It right? free. Come yeah. and join us. You get more access to Todd and I. You get a lot of ideas and templates and PDFs and who knows what we're going to do next, but uh, it's a great place to go. Hundreds of people have already joined. Why haven't you? We'll see you over there. Yeah, check it out. Today's topic, Todd. Mm -hmm. Principle number 11 on the manifesto, the manifesto of agile software development, the best architectures, requirements, and designs emerge from self-organizing teams. Looks like Grogu is hanging in the balance. Yeah. You better, you better break this one down, Todd. <laughs> He's hanging on his, uh, his uh, Grogu T over there. Um, best architectures, requirements, and designs. Self-organizing teams. You know what I, what stands out to me here, Mr. Miller? I might jump in here. Mm -hmm. Requirements emerge. Mm -hmm. This is really a, a big sticking point. We saw a sticking point out of a community of very high, highly talented scrum professionals where even with people who know better, it's like, oh, I want the requirements to be perfect before I commit, before I start, before we jump in. And it's like, mm -hmm. no, they emerge by design, according to the manifesto, from self-organizing teams. I, I love the fact that requirements got tossed in there with emergence. Yeah, it's interesting because when when uh, when the time comes around to it and uh, there's a lot at stake on the line, right? Uh, you know, I've said this over and over again, and maybe it's just me, but there's this like this thing we crave, this certainty that we want that we want everything answered. We want the unknowns. And sometimes as long as we have the very basics, we just have to go for it. Right. Yep. Talk is cheap. Um, you've got to, if you're going to talk the talk, you got to walk the walk. I tend to be on the other side of it. I tend to walk the walk. And sometimes that gets me, as you know, and a little bit of trouble. Hey, Todd, you want to? Yep, I'm already jumping off the bridge. And you're like, I didn't mean, you know, like that yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> Pull the cord. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you forgot your parachute, Todd. Oh. <laughs> but I think, in a way, Todd, you know, our a good friend of ours, Woody Zool, always says it's by it's by doing the work that you learn about the work that needs to be done. Hmm. And and I think you and I are more geared towards that as you're highlighting that. Whether it's architecture requirements or designs, we want to do. We want to know the minimal but sufficient. Get something started. Get some feedback. Create. Look, I I think one of the main purposes of Agile, and we talk about this in our classes all the time, we are trying to help teams create opportunities to make new and better decisions over and over and over and over again. That's emergence. Mm -hmm. We're not locking into big things. We're not locking into, you know, here's a 300 page requirement document. You need to get it done by October 3rd. No, let's, what's the minimal that we need to, to validate the next best thing to do. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, we're going to learn all along the way. Like that's the whole thing. It's uh, I, I really like that quote. I really like some of the stuff that Woody Zool talks about there. And um, you know, it's just, I, my mind's just drifting back and sitting on the, um, that uh, the moments that we had. Uh, earlier this week with that and um, some really smart people. Yeah, I fortunately or not <laughs> am now the scrum master of that team, which is cool. <laughs> I guess it's an it's an honor, right? Um, but it's um, yeah, it happens. It happens to everybody, especially you know the outside. This isn't happening to that team when the bullets are flying, Ryan. Sometimes people have this tendency to want to just hey, let's stop, let's take a timeout. Let's figure all the requirements out. Let's figure all the architect. Let's go back to the way we did it before. Yep. Right. Um, that's when I think we need to stand amongst our principles and values the most is when those things are happening. Uh, we need to maybe take a deep breath, but that doesn't mean that we should stop and figure everything out because we never will. This right. is just the nature of complex work. Well, and I think Scrum embodies this beautifully. 
It puts a lot of the decision making in the hands of developers. Uh, more recently in Scrum Guide 2020, a lot of the accountability falls to the entire Scrum team, which is now called self managing instead of uh, self organizing. But uh, I, I see the I think I see them as like cousins, if not synonyms, right? I think there's a lot of similar ideas between the two. And so Scrum has embraced this fully, not surprising because Ken and Jeff are both signatories of the Agile Manifesto and they both co-created Scrum. But their architecture requirements and designs, we work in sprints, we work iteratively and incrementally. We're not making big designs up front. We're not making big architectures up front. In fact, value flows with the architecture. We're always validating that the right architecture is in place because we're shipping value alongside of it. We're validating designs along with the requirements because we're shipping frequently and getting feedback in a sprint review. And it's a self-organizing team ultimately deciding what's the next best thing to do. And so I think Scrum has really taken this idea and turned it up to 11. Mm -hmm. And uh, if this is not part of your current Scrum practice, you're really missing that ding is another person joining the community. <laughs> uh, if you're not in there, where are you? Yeah, um, come join us. But Scrum really turns this up to 11. If this mm -hmm. principle is difficult uh, in your current organization and you're a Scrum shop, you're missing a huge piece of the of the secret sauce that makes Scrum work. So dig into this, check out Fixing Your Scrum. Our book can help with this. Um, mm -hmm. Join our community and ask a question and we'll help you there. But uh, this is uh, one of the important uh, things that, that Scrum really leverages uh, for self-managing uh, high-performing teams. Right. And screen time, be sure to like and subscribe, mm -hmm. click that bell. You don't wanna miss any of Todd's brilliance every each and every day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Check out socials. A little um, bit much there. A little bit much. A little much. Leave us a comment. Leave us a question. Join us in the uh, Agile for Humans community. Check out the videos that are popping up. Uh, we think you're going to like those as well. Three, I mean, hundreds of videos. I think we're up to around 300. Lots of questions, lots of formats, lots of new ideas. I'm sure there's something in there that helps. Uh, if not, leave a question below. Let us know what else we can answer. For Todd Miller, I'm Ryan Ripley. Go forward, do some great scrum things. Leverage self-managing teams, manage minimal but sufficient, and uh, let us know how it goes in the comments. We'll see you tomorrow.